Hi there, welcome to another edition of Bustanet. My name is Rashidi and I've been away for a while. I've had lots of things to do and very little time to play the game. So I've tried to get as much as I can into this game for today's show. First, before I begin with the game, um, I'm going to respond to a query I got on addictedtofm.com, the blog. Wins, I'm very happy you see that you're using a 4312 from 2015. Like I've said many times before, in all versions of this game, if a tactic and a system are solid, you can use them in every single version of the game. The I don't believe in the word tactic in the game anymore. You use a super system. When I call, What I call a super system is when you know a tactic well enough for you to modify and adapt it for different situations in the game. I have one tactic and I can go counter, control, attacking with the system just by changing a few of the roles here and there to compensate. You have done almost the same thing and you're using, um, you tweaked it a bit which is really good and you're fitting it into the team that you have and you've been going on a good run and that's that's excellent. I would worry about the complete wing back. If you find that your complete wing backs are getting a bit exposed then you know you could drop them to a full back. The question that you have is about retraining players into roles um, that their favorite roles. Now for me personally speaking I believe that you should just train a player into the role that you need for the team. That's it. So if you need a player for a certain role and your team likes that, but you have a player with the necessary attributes, retrain him. I do that all the time. Do I look at favorite roles? I never have and I probably never will. So that is the best advice I can give anyone. Now, what about using the same tactic with a team that's a bit down in the pecking order? In this case, you know, you're going to accept the fact that maybe you might have to drop mentality. For every team, you know, you, you might have to adjust it here and there. With my 4-3-1-2, I, whenever I play with a lower league team or I play with any other team, chances are those complete wing backs change into full backs. And I start looking and adjusting the passing passings, um, instructions on the team as well just to hold on to the ball. Because uh, if I keep the ball with me, then chances are they can't do very much with the ball against me so that and thanks to the thanks to the question on the blog it really got me thinking it is a really good question and keep those questions coming in and i'll try and answer as many of them as i can so i've been away for a few weeks because work has uh, got me quite occupied and i've had a ton of things to do i was using a few tactics in the game including a 4-3-3 because barcelona inspired me but i've reverted back to a 4-1-2-2-1 in the last couple of games because i am more interested in having defensive solidity than attacking prowess at the moment because we're not exactly the best team in the land and if you look at my defiant system um, on the screen right now it's basically a control system but if I wanted to, I probably would change some of the instructions here. I would take off the uh, more direct passing here and I'll probably go to shorter passing if I wanted to play in an attacking system. Simply because I can elect to um, pass the ball around and camp in people's halves. So there are basically two ways you can set this system up. Now, you could play a control system to make it uh, like launch the ball as quickly as you can. So that in that case, I'll set it to more direct passing and then the width gets moved up and uh, my players up front will be the kind of guys that the ball gets to their feet and they will be able to do something with it on the flanks. And this is really good for wide players. I could also opt to go shorter passing, right? Now, if I go shorter passing, it makes my team a bit more compact. It means that we need to pass the ball around a lot, uh, very well, basically. <laughs> Well, so we're going to look like idiots trying to find each other. Um, and the players don't have the technical skills to put that off. Then I could be paying a big price. So for the next game, we will just go more direct passing because you're not that good. Okay, so the assistant manager basically decided on our lineup today. He's playing Zappa Costa. I've never played in this whole season. So um, yeah, let's see what how his recommendation looks like. All right, now... And Poli actually using my favorite system, the 4312, which means that they're going to come largely from here. And I've got to look out for Lorini on the right flank to make those runs. And if Lorini is making those runs, that will put Danino Alvela under some pressure. So I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to my defensive left. So, yeah. I'm looking at um, Empolini actually having quite a good 
start with their fullbacks on the right flank. So um, I was a bit concerned about how well their fullbacks are going to move up, and so far I have been proven right. And they've scored from a corner, Macaroni. And Poli have taken the lead. Uh -huh. So this, my dear friends, is an issue. We've conceded from a corner. Someday soon I will have to work on my set pieces. But I'm not working on them yet. Baselli, two. Oh, it gets cleared too easily. Mario Rui coming out with the ball. Plays a really good ball out. Uh, Croc. So far we don't look like we're doing a very good job defending, are we? That's another corner. Empoli with the second corner of the game. Oh, Jensen off the line. Martinez has a chance to launch the attack. Bellotti is playing as a lone forward, so he's going to have to wait for support to come up. He finds up a Costa who does gets his feet entangled. <laughs> Alright, so far, not doing too well. They're doing most of the attacking. We haven't even come out of our own box yet. So we are playing away from home. Let's just go attacking. And the shots don't need to be changed. 29 minutes in and we have now um, basically just told our players to be a bit more attacking at the moment and hopefully we get some... We're taking a bit more risk right now with the mentality. We got to take some risk and attempt to create some chances. Okay, we're going to make another change to the system. We're going to tell Avala to attack. And we're going to tell Bruno Perez to attack. What I'm going to do is slightly different now. Okay, so Drum Doctor will now be he's still on tank but the winger can be on support okay so the winger is going to come out a bit deeper now allowing for some overlapping play I want to camp in their half and I want to Ooh, good save from Padelli. Still goal down to Empoli. I'm going to have to work a bit harder now. The 4 3 1 2 is a very good system. If the balance is right in terms of attacking and defending, you're going to find it um, very hard to defend against a 4 3 1 2. Because they can actually put their fullbacks into a really attacking positions and you can't really come out. Another corner, Empoli. Macaroni almost makes it too. First, I'm going to tell my players aggressively. Hopefully that works. Okay, let's go to our tactics overview. Now, we need to look at the player ratings as well. So who's who's playing really badly? Avila is playing badly. Paselli is playing badly. And Andre Balotu is playing badly. So basically, most of my team... I mean, 6.3 to 6.6 .6 is fairly average. But Zappa Costa is playing at 6.8. And I didn't want him to be playing this game. And we don't have a game winner coming off the bench unless I ask Bruno Perez to go attack. And I use Marco Moscati on the right. Can't really do that. Okay, so here we are, second half. We haven't made any changes. Uh, just had a team talk. Good boot from Jensen. Oh, Baselli is not playing a good game. We're gonna make one substitution. We're gonna take Baselli off and bring on someone else. Mm -hmm. Who should we bring on? Gazi will come out for Baselli.
could see from Padelli. Benassi, corner. Bellotti will hit it back to Benassi. Benassi back to Bellotti. Bellotti will find Sapo Costa who scores. Yes, Torino score, red equalizer. First ever goal for Torino from Zappa Costa. Zappa Costa, who's never started a game for me, has scored a goal. Pelotti finding him free inside the box. The keeper could do nothing about the shot. We now have four shots on goal there, eh? and Poli have only 14 shots at goal. Which is quite a lot. So far it looks like um, our defensive line is perfectly okay. Uh, this is a good test of the defensive line actually. Yes, that means my defensive line is fairly okay because my defenders didn't have to run too far backwards to get the ball. That's why I look at, oh, what a bad, bad ball. No, what a save from Padelli. Bad, bad passing from our players. We've given away another set piece to Empoli. Good header. Kazi with the ball. Heads it to no one. Maelo now free. Has all the time in the world to find Marco Rui. Okay, we've, had, we've managed to get a few more shots. At goal. On target, 3 out of 5. I like those kind of odds, actually. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's, our conversion rate is actually higher than Emboli's. Lorino. Marcello. Good defending from Aqua. Back to Lorino, Gazi clears the ball, Zappa Costa has no chance to do anything with uh, trying to stop someone else with the ball. Danilo Avila does enough to throw another player off, the, off his balance. Pelotti, uh, he's just playing the ball aimlessly up front. Okay, so Torino managed to hopefully get something from this game. We haven't played very well. Zappa Costa, Marco Rui couldn't clear the ball. Zappa Costa has time to cross a ball to Martinez. Ooh, hits the upright. Oh, that would have been quite a story if they managed to score from that. To Mario Rui, he plays a cross to no one. Danilo Avala hits the ball clear. And Torino walk away with a point. I'm upset with the team. They should have won the match. Okay, for our next match, we're away to Napoli. Alright, so in the Serie A, Napoli is close to the bottom. I'm going to actually be a, frankly, between con for the match against Napoli, I'm going to be playing control and slightly in their heart, in their face. So, in order for me to explain things a bit more clearly, I'm going to clear the board. Alright, so we're going to go control. Now, I like to play with a slightly deeper defensive line because my players have more time to get back into defensive positions. In a, in a control or attacking system, I generally tend to tell my players to stay on feet. I want them to go past me and I don't want my players to go in and commit to tackling too early. Prevent short goalkeeper uh, instructions. This time I'm going to tell them to be playing shorter passing because in the last game I noticed that with more direct passing, we frankly screwed things up. My tempo will be slightly higher. See, you look... Alright, so... um. My tempo will be normal, I'm not going to change my tempo around. Okay, so what about all this? You know, I'm not going to bother with these guys. I'm just going to work in ball into box and play with crosses. And that's it. Those are my instructions. So now we are about to start the next game against Napoli. Actually, we are playing at home. Um, I thought we were playing away. So we're still going to be keeping the same instructions. I'm just making sure that I have the right players today playing the game. Assists, not too many assists. We've got Daniel Vassetti who plays a really big part in the way we play and going forward. Um, we also have Sanjin Pritchik who actually is not a bad player. Uh, we'll leave Zappa Costa on the bench. Maxi Lopez is not um, match fit yet. We're going to have Benassi. He didn't play too well in the last game. I'm going to bring in Ghazi uh, in, his, in his stead. Okay. Pontus Jensen is on a yellow card. That's not very, very good. Okay, we are going to play against... So just made some small changes to the lineup. So 
So we made some small changes to our lineup for the match against Napoli. I have put in uh, Pritchik uh, instead of Zabagosa scored our, you know, our goal last week. Um, Benazi didn't play really well. He had to be substituted, so I'm putting Ghazi in this time around. And let's see how that does. Okay, so we're playing a uh, we're playing against a diamond. They're gonna be playing a bit narrow. We we'll hope. Okay, and the game's off. Torino against Napoli. Torino's at home. This time around, I'm working on making sure that we keep uh, possession as much as possible. And oh, oh, oh Pritchik, opening three minutes in and he scores. Thank you very much for affirming my faith in you. He, I was I brought him on the stick of Zapacosta because I think Pritchik is slightly more intelligent on the ball, and although he doesn't tackle nearly as well. So, but still, you know, he, he has got a, he, he knows when to be in the right place at the right time and he's got really good off the ball ratings. So I wanted somebody who's got better movement. Torino with another corner. Richard again out wide, staying wide. Can he do something with this? Finds Gazi. Oh, Gazi. Rockets and scores the second. <clears throat> Torino 2, Napoli 0. That was uh, initially the good block when Gazi first times the rebound back into the net. Okay, Gazi has picked up a yellow card. So I'm going to tell Ghazi to um, take a chill pill. Oh, that's going to be a problem for him because he's already active for this role. So I'm going to change this role because I don't want him to get sent off. So I can change him to a defend and then uh, he won't have that problem anymore. He's off tackles. Thank you very much. And let's close down. Yeah, that's that's good enough. Okay. What I've done is because the ball winning midfielder is already defaulted on attacking uh, hard, so I've um, asked Gazi to change to a central midfielder. That way he doesn't have to. That way I get a choice of taking him off a uh, hard tackling. Oh, Pritchick. First time shot, almost scores. Baselli out again to Pritchick. First time the cross in, but Reyna um, does easily to pick the ball up. Okay, the boys are playing well. We'll just maintain that for the second half. Baseri to Aqua, Aqua finds Martinez, oh, it was brought down by Maggio, who oh, actually didn't bring him down, tackled pretty well. Now that, when you see Danilo Avila hit the ball back, uh, by tracking backwards, means the defensive line is still good. This is a nicely balanced defensive line. So I don't want to change this, so just playing it slightly deeper in control seems to suit my team a lot better. Bruno Perez at the cross, Bellotti, oh, first times, almost scores. Very good save from Pepe Rini. Okay, we'll make a substitution now. Um, bring on Benazi for Ghazi. Maxi Lopez for Bellotti. Oh, Prima for Jensen. It's a three-man change. We don't want an injury, do we? Pretty comfortable. Torino has not really been threatened very much this game. They've played a really good game. Controlled the game and the tempo really well. And um, I'm happy with the changes that we've made tactically. I'm happy.
Maxi, what a... Oh, my goodness, Maxi with a no-look pass to Ma uh, Martinez. We just couldn't finish. Okay, so uh, we're almost at the end of the game. I'm happy with how we have played. Uh, this game was uh, won largely in the first half. Defensive line again looking pretty comfortable. There's nothing that we need to worry about on the counter attack from teams at the moment. Uh, we don't have to track very far back, so we're gonna have a look at more teams to see how we do. Um, so we've won this game comfortably. Not too much pressure on us in this game. Uh, more on Napoli. Napoli were the ones that were tossing in the tackles. Napoli with their loss drops into the relegation zone. Now uh, we're joining Empoli and Chievo. We have uh, we have played really well. One of the top performers was this guy Bruno Perez. He was a fullback. Two games in with the new patch, uh, we drew the first game and won the second game. Made some changes in order for us to control the ball a bit better. Um, I noticed that in the first game, I had more direct passes, and you know these boys were just giving the ball away. Uh, and now, on the other hand, we have actually done a lot better against uh, Napoli, and we've beaten Napoli and sent them into the relegation zone. We are now five points clear of Juventus and seven points clear of Udinese and you know we are happy as can be well as you can see the patch didn't break the game it didn't make the game unplayable the patch did not ruin anything for people on Christmas it definitely didn't do anything to me it was I didn't actually pay very much attention to it did I? I mean, like, I didn't make any major changes. Um, those changes I made were basically down to the attributes of my players. They couldn't pass the ball very well, so I told them to get off more direct passing. And that's it. Well, if you know where to find me, if you have any questions, please drop me a note. Either you can do it um, on this YouTube channel, or better still, you know, find me on Twitter, or find me on my blog at addicted to fm.com for now i'm going to sign off and try and work on another article for the blog i'll catch you guys again soon very soon Bye bye.